The movie industry is in trouble. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. You're a movie guy. This is episode 77, by the way. Because of the strike, which a lot of people followed, there are a lot of reductions in budgets and a lot of stuff that was supposed to get made isn't getting made and they're making cuts. And this is a problem for streaming services because they need content. And if they're saying that there's going to be a reduction of content upwards of, let's say, 40, 50%, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff that just isn't going to get made. And um, obviously, it's not great for consumers either because, you know, we pay for these services. And that's the other concern that these companies have. If they can't keep people on their services paying every month, then that spells trouble, well, right? Can they just filter through old movies? Bring, well, there's, all... it's true that a lot of people don't necessarily sign up for Netflix, Amazon, Disney, just for new content. It, actually, a lot of times it's the opposite. People are looking for their favorite, oh, that show that they grew up with. Maybe Friends. Friends is a great example yeah. of an intellectual property that costs a lot of money to keep for Netflix. And uh, I think they lost that deal and it went somewhere else. Crave. But uh, yeah, in Canada, it's, Crave, it's Crave TV, which is owned by Bell Media, another massive company. But um, yeah, these companies want a giant back catalog of content that people know about uh, so they can well, just okay, keep so what you, watching okay, more so and more hours. Netflix isn't going to be making more content and newer content for the stream can't they just filter through old movies and old shows and bring them back onto the platform so people can just watch those? Like, I understand there's not going to be more uh, Netflix originals coming out. Well, they're still going to make... I mean, Netflix is actually financially in a better spot than a lot of these other companies, which I'll get to in a moment. Wasn't but, Netflix in the shitter a few years They were ago? for... Yeah, they came out of that. Yeah. They came out of that. So they're doing much better now, uh, even though they're going to be doing yet another price hike which nobody enjoys. But I think a lot of people are going to continue to pay for Netflix because yeah. they, they obviously like the service and I think they're going to keep using it. But um, the thing is, is that all these companies, they have to spend tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions on licensing, right? So that's why sometimes you'll hop on Netflix or Disney Plus or some other streaming service. All of a sudden that favorite show that you liked is gone, yeah. Right. That's because they've lost that license deal that they 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 usually have a finite time that they have access to it. Say two, three, whatever that contract says, you have access to this. You're paying us the X amount of dollars. You have access it ha access to it for a number of years. So, okay, for and that goes away unless they can renegotiate and get that back onto the server. Who do they negotiate? For example, for Friends, who do they talk to for the show of Friends? And Whoever owns Friends, which I can't remember. I don't know if it's Paramount or some other big company, which, by the way, Paramount is also in huge financial trouble. They're hemorrhaging money, and I don't want to see them go away because Paramount, Warner Brothers, those two big companies, you know, they go way back to the beginning of film, right? And there's rumors that Warner Brothers is looking to acquire Paramount. Now, I don't know if it's actually going to happen, but it would be an incredible deal for Warner Brothers because they get access to all of Paramount's old content. And that's a huge deal. If those two streaming streaming services merge, that is going to be good for consumers because then they get to access a lot more content. And that's another thing. We're going to have a lot of problems over the le next few years is that subscription fatigue is setting in big time for a lot of people and people are starting to cut down their, you know, they're paying for Netflix. They got Disney, they got Amazon, which I, I almost don't want to include Amazon because it's kind of Amazon prime is a kind of a throwaway because if you buy a lot of stuff from Amazon, you've got prime, you've got two day shipping. They just kind of throw in prime for free. Right. Mm, so, but yeah, all these, but, but you got Paramount, you got Peacock, you got HBO. There's just too much choice. Each, each platform has much a choice. show that the other platform most likely doesn't. So for, for example, um, Netflix has Breaking Bad. I don't know if any other platform has Breaking Bad. I know Prime has Two and a Half Men. Crave has Friends. So they almost like, it's, it's hard it's hard to really just like go with one because if you're a fan of all those shows and you really want to watch those shows, you have to be sus subscribed to all of them. That's where it gets tough. You well, know? yeah, and it gets expensive for a lot yeah. of people. But if know? one platform was to be like, okay, fuck all you guys, I'm going to, we're going to bring Friends and Two and a Half Men and Breaking Bad all into one platform, 
every it's done well that's what I'm, that's what i'm saying if warner brothers and paramount get together and have one service that you pay for that has everything that those companies have are they offer, always actively competing in each they're always actively competing yeah and it's a lot of that is also it's not just for licensing of old content but it's also new and original content uh what can they do to get people interested in subscribing now sometimes people sign up for services just because oh there's a new show coming out and it's only it's exclusive to that platform so you have no other choice if you want to watch that show you got to pay for it and now they're doing this thing where they're releasing their slow drip slow dripping the content right one new episode per week like they used to do with cable tv which is frustrating and maddening for a lot of people because you by the time next week comes around you've forgotten a lot of that previous episode whereas you you know it's n- kind of nice to be able to binge watch an entire season just put it up all online and watch it all at once that's it was but now that's not happening day, but there's you a, would have to wait a week to find out what happens next that's, that's how, how that's how that, cheap show business that's how they used to do it them. and they're doing that now on a lot of platforms because it keeps people coming back they have to pay if they just put all the episodes of a season up at one time, then you just watch all of them, you binge it, and you can't cancel. You can cancel, yeah. Right? Where, yeah. Whereas if it's coming out one episode a week, it's like, I can't cancel because I know next week is a new episode. Right. I want to see that. Right. So it's smart on their end to do it that way, but it's also frustrating for us because it's like, I, I don't remember yeah. what happened last week. That's actually true. One of my friends, he subscribed to Crave just to watch The Sopranos. Yeah. And he binges it within three weeks and cancels his yeah. subscription right there. Well, let me ask you this. Do you, do you have a preference? Do you prefer to just, like, I'm going to wait till this whole season's out. I'm just going to watch it all at once. Or do you, do you like the one episode a week? Or do you do you find yourself forgetting what happened? Man, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, ha- I haven't had to do the one episode a week model in so long that I just binge watch everything, yeah. I mean, any everything. Any, if, a sh- if a show captures my attention and I'm um, I'm stuck on it, I'm finishing it. I try to finish it until I get fucking exhausted and I have to turn it off until right. the next day. Um, yeah, but no, I'm like that too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's just yeah, I binge watch it and um try to finish. It, it, it's almost it's like a it's like a, it, it's an achievement to finish a show as fast as you can see to see who we can finish it we can finish it the fastest and yeah i don't know i i personally don't have a show right now that i want to watch i try to get into game of thrones man and i just can't do it it's the most well it's now so goddamn boring i've only seen the first season but now i don't want to see it because i know how it ends and i know how disappointing a lot of people or uh, i know a lot of people were disappointed by the ending the way it ends so it's kind of why and this is the other thing that i'm sure a lot of these streaming services are concerned about is that if people are waiting for an entire, not just a season, but an entire show to have like a complete story and finish before they start watching it, well, that's not good either because that means that that person isn't coming back to that service on a regular basis. They're just going to wait a year until the whole show is done and they're not making money from you, right? If you do that. And a lot of people are doing it. I know people for a fact that will not watch a show until the whole series is complete. Then they watch it because they want that satisfying conclusion that it's actually ending. Nothing is more annoying when a show gets canceled and it leaves you on a cliffhanger and you just know, well, fuck, I can't. It, there's no satisfying conclusion because they've canceled the show. It's really annoying. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be know. interesting I, what's going to happen in the next next few years because we're going to see a lot of... Um, there's going to be a lot of changes in these uh, in these platforms. They'll figure and it out. I, I, you know, I'm They'll fine with it, it. They'll figure it out. But and we're uh, still going to pay for it. Let's be honest here. A lot of a lot of people will. Yeah, but we but will. I'm totally you will. I I'm, will. I'm feeling the fin- the the subscription fatigue. You know, after you start subscribing to a lot of services, it starts to add up. You know, and we used to well, when we used all. to have we just, cable. We're just consumers, man. Nobody That's liked, just how it is. We just want everything. Nobody liked paying 150, 200, 250 dollars a month for cable. Right. And by the time you start adding up all these annual costs of all these subscription services, it adds up quick. You could be easily spending a hundred bucks a year. Yeah. Easily, if not way more than that. Dude, I want to talk about one thing. Can we can we pivot into this? You know how a lot of people that grow up with not as much money, not as much privilege as others, and you know, they really 
grind and work their way through the ranks and make something out of themselves. And it's such an inspiring story, you know, such a triumphant success when someone does that and we give that person so much success or respect and sure. and glory. There has to be there has to be something said about those that did grow up with a lot of privilege and a lot of resources and they continue to try to make something out of themselves. Because I think as a society we kind of we we have this negative view on people that seem to have it all from a child. You're talking about privileged, privileged people, people yeah. and they. You're, and you're not necessarily just talking about wealthy people. You're just talking about anybody who had a good upbringing. Yeah, good upbringing, things, wealthy. I you know, mean, middle middle class, middle class, right? And decent life. They personally make the decision that they're going to make something out of their lives and not just be a trust fund baby and and a industry plant of their their environment. Right. And I think, dude, there's a lot of. St- stress on kids and individuals that are raised in that environment i think because that's it's, it's it's a bit of a it's one of those things where you know they they work on themselves and they get to a certain point where they are successful and they're always it's always chalked up to oh well you know you grew up with money you know your parents had money you you had that given to you you on a silver platter it's like sure a lot of things that I was able to do were because of the privilege that I had, but I had to take the initiative to work on whatever I wanted to work on and really build myself. And I feel like that is a, that is a, um, that is a thing that's not focused enough as much. I just, I I totally get it. Like a guy like celebrities. Can I give you, can I give you an example? Like for in the, in the, in the, in the sports world, someone like Stephen Curry, so his fam- his dad was in the NBA, right? He w- his dad wasn't a superstar by any means, but he was a you know a steady NBA player that had a very decent career. Well, it's not downplayed. If you get into the NBA, you're, that's, you're that's a legit. Big deal. You're legit, and you're making money. Very right? small percentage of people. Sure, back in the day, you weren't making as much money as you are right now as an NBA athlete, but you were yeah. very very it's a big well accomplishment. Off. And for Steph Curry to grow up under that circumstance and being in that privileged space for him to tell himself well i want to make something out of my life i'm going to grind i want to achieve my goals and and um mm-hmm. i'm going to dream big and do still it still had to do the work still had to do the work and and let's face it you have to have some talent right it's not one of those things where you know, a, 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 he's a rose that grew from concrete. He had it. He had it tough. He had to. He had to really grind his way to get out of that struggle and out of that environment. He was privileged, whether he made the NBA or not, and he still would have been okay to this day if he wasn't an NBA player, right? So, I don't know. I think that's. I think that's something that's very admirable for people that are I in agree. that, right? And okay, I don't want to be that guy, but. A lot of people, I feel, I am privileged to be able to do this for, you know, right now, right? Because I do have the resources to pay you to come here freaking every week, you know, to have these guests on. And, you know, we both know I'm losing money right now doing this, right? But I have the resources I can afford to lose it because, you know, I grew up in privilege and I am working, right? So, but I've decided, like, I want to make something out of this. I want to do that. And that's really tough. I think that's really tough, man, for someone in that um, in that circumstance because people get complacent and comfortable because a lot of people that are growing up in, a, like, a privileged household and... um have a lot of things given to them do get lazy do get lazy and totally just lose their I, ambition and- I, I think if especially if you're in the public eye uh, a great example of this is um when eddie van halen died you know for especially for me as a guitar player rock god uh you know a lot of people look up to him as a guitar player as a songwriter achieved a lot his his son wolfgang who toured with him as well is also a really talented musician but following him on social media i can see 
just the sheer amount of garbage he has to deal with. I'm just reading all the comments, and there's so much negativity of a, of people saying, "Oh, you're just using social media as a platform, leveraging your dad's career and his death as like, oh, poor me, I gotta." You know, it's like, but he's legitimately talented and he's writing music and he's, he's putting in the work, yeah. you know, and, and yes, he, decided, he was the son of, yeah. of, of a successful musician and obviously has money and he doesn't have to worry about that, but he still, if he had no talent, yeah. he'd have no talent. Yeah. He wouldn't and he, be. And he took it upon himself to try to not be associated with his dad's name. Yeah. And he's got his own solo career and he's like, you know, he's, he's out there trying to make a name for himself trying to be known and it's hard to get when when your dad is at that level and has that level of celebrity it's hard to get uh, out of the the shadow of your father to try to make a name for, him, for yourself and you're constantly dealing with all this negativity yeah. and hate online well not also especially, especially when you're when your dad is that famous and he's such a fucking celebrity yeah right i'm just specifically talking about people that grew up with wealthy parents and were in right. that middle class right like a guy like even a guy like chris D'Elia, i mean people always make fun of him i don't know really anything about his upbringing yeah well he, he was you know decently well off you'll never he's not one of those was he guys. a middle class guy he's a middle class guy yeah. his dad was in movie and show business not the most wealthy family but you know he wanted to make a name of himself for himself and I think there is something to respect when people just go for it and have the courage to do whatever they want. Yeah. Even I, though people, even though I agree, even though you know people are gonna. Well, I think people should be you for being like, oh well, you you can afford to do this, man. You you have money. You 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 can pay to be there. You can pay to. Well, that's yeah, fair, but we should also just judge people on the merits of their work and not on their yeah. parents and uh, not on their privilege too. Because if Chris D'Elia wasn't a funny comedian, he wouldn't have an audience. He wouldn't have a following, right? Right. And so you could judge him on that. If he's not funny, he's not funny, but he's out. And whatever you think of his comedy or not, he obviously does have a big following. And uh, he does what he does and he is... He's he selling is, out shows and he's out there and he's yeah. wor he's working hard and working on perfecting his craft yeah. and I I respect that. Yeah. So I respect anybody who works at a craft. I don't care what their background is. I don't care if they're financially set because of their parents. The fact is that you're still having to put the work in. Mm. It, it's very it's very true and I I don't know if you're like this but I remember there was a point in my life in my 20s where and again to your point about when you get older you start to really focus on the things that are important to you, especially with friends. One of the things that I cared about when I was a lot younger is the 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 size of my friend group, like the size of my network was important to me. Like I cared, it's going to sound stupid. I mean, Facebook's been around long enough. This just goes to show you because I'm 41 just how many, now. Just how many friends In my mid-20s, when back in the day when I yeah. first started using Facebook, I cared about the number of friends I had. Yeah, yeah, I remember that was the I'm thing. Like, that was the thing. Yes, 450 friends yes, on Facebook, Yes, yes, right? what and was that? I remember I, being like that too, yeah. And now I just don't give a fuck. Yeah, that really. Because I only, and I only connect with people online that I truly consider a friend, not just random connections, yeah. friend of a friend. No, I'm not keeping you on there. Dude, do, do you consider me a friend? Sure. Oh, just sure, dude? <laughs> We're friends. We're friends. I just never know. The, I'm always worried. I've talked about this before. I'm always worried about the not crossing a line with people. What do we cross? Because um, because there's a certain level of professionalism I still have to have. So I don't want to get too comfortable. We're friends. I just don't. It's for me. This is a me thing. Nothing against you. Because you also you I don't text wanna, very professional. Like that's just how I talk to everybody, though. Is that how it is? As, with even everyone? my parents. Yeah, that's how I talk. To why are you like that i just i just just talk just I like talk that casual dude it's okay that is casual to me because it's weird for me too because then now i have to i have to i have to match that energy with well give people an example because they okay not looking so at instead of me saying gonna yeah like i'm gonna go there i say i'm going to go there whereas with anyone else i would say gonna but with you i don't want you to think lower of me because i'm saying it as that, gonna. You, you, that actually comes into your mind 
with you. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> dude. That's funny. That's yes, really funny, dude. I don't talk. The way I text you is different from the way I text other okay. people. And I trust me, I don't want to text like that. But I just want to match the same energy because I don't want you to think <laughs> less of me. But then again, I don't. I don't you I shouldn't be, care about what you, you, you think be, about you, me because you I'm be you. me. Don't don't care. I'm me. I I do my, exactly. I do my I do my thing. You do your thing. I don't want to. I'm not looking to change anybody. Do you think? Do you think I'm? Uh, do you think I'm doing well, man? That you're doing well in what respect? Just life. You seem to be doing well. You th do you think? Do you think? Um, you seem I'm happy. You seem to like your job. You seem to enjoy doing this show every week. You're committed to it, which I I appreciate. Uh, you know, it seem uh, you're you seem like the kind of person that when they say they're gonna do something, they actually do it and they follow through with it. Don't which flatter me like that. A lot of people don't. don't flatter me. Like I have that. friends. I have friends and. Well, I will not mention names so that I'm very hesitant to embark on any kind of project with because I just know they're going to be flaky. Yeah. You just kind of, I don't know, man. You, with this whole thing and me and you doing this, I think that we're at the point, I'm at least at the point where I don't care as much about what people think about it anymore. I can read a you definitely have developed a thicker skin. I remember how you were two, three years ago. Yeah. You were a lot more sensitive about what people said online. Yeah. For sure. Pretty much every comment. You noticed that? that? Ever, yeah. You noticed that yeah. change in yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, I pretty much don't care about the comments anymore. And I get some pretty hateful comments, which are pretty funny. But it, they still kind of, I mean, I still see them. I'm, I'm like, huh, wow. Okay. But I'm at the point where... I just think to myself, dude, if you're a guy that comments something hateful on someone else's Instagram, what do you do? Like, what? For the record, I just want to say, too, that Mo is stone cold sober every time he comes in here. He does not get high. People keep no, I saying don't. that you're high. I okay. That's just his voice. He's not high. He is sober. <laughs> he is a fucking professional when he comes in here. Thanks, man. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I don't know, dude. I I haven't I haven't smoked weed in five years. That's the last time I smoked weed. I can I drink. No, I can I, drink here I and there. I have nothing against people that smoke weed. I'm just for the record saying. For the record, when man. you come in here, you're sober. Yeah. What if I wasn't? Would you call me out, like, dude? Oh yeah. Figure it out. I I, I would say. Because would it make you uncomfortable, or it would just bring the whole quality of the it's whole? It's not about my comfort level. It's about uh, I gotta protect your. This is your brand, your show. Mm. So I would just be protecting you and saying this. We need to reschedule this. If you came in here trashed, I'd say we're not doing this episode because it's a waste of your money mm. and it's a waste of my time. Mm. It's a waste of everybody else's time because no one's gonna want to watch that. Yeah. I mean, it could be funny, but. Could be really funny. I don't really enjoy watching human beings fall yeah. apart on camera. Right. Well, it's I mean, I've been, it's I've embarrassing. been, I've been a little, a little buzz on camera before with the UFC, but yeah. that was an event. That, Fine. I mean, that was something. Fine. But no, I'm yeah. talking about like if you truly came Drinks in here and you were, boy. like, I don't know what you, what you are like when you drink too much, but some people become really belligerent and they become obnoxious and it shows. And I, I just wouldn't want, <laughs> I wouldn't want that for your show. I wouldn't want this to devolve into, yeah. It's something that people just look at you and go, well, what is happening here? Right. I don't want you to lose an audience, right? We're trying to build something, trying to gain people's trust. I hope a lot of people listen to this and get something out of it and just like who we are. I, I really I really hope that's the case. And I don't expect any... Well, I, I mean, it has this, to be. I mean, really, ultimately, uh, you, know, you know, beyond just the content, whatever you're... Tune in, whatever reason you're tuning in for, whatever it is, whether it's an interview with someone or whatever the subject matter is, you ultimately, I think, for any kind of entertainment show, you have to, you have to like the people that are talking yeah. on screen. There has to be some likability. Otherwise, why are you watching? Why do we watch any show? Well, it's because we connect with people. Mm. We connect with characters. We connect with individuals. They're a personality, right? Otherwise, you're not going to watch it. And certainly, there's a lot of shows, a lot of podcasts where I look at it and I go, "Wow, you should really not be. One thing, on, one you should thing, not be talking yeah. right now. You know, it's just. Would you tell me? Would you honestly tell me if I was at that point where I just didn't know what I was doing, and you? I would, I would definitely you, say something. You just 
Well, I've, I've already, something like I've been nothing but brutally honest with you before. I mean, yeah. we talked about this already God before. Damn, with, I really need to get the word with, like out of my fucking vocab. It's so bad. As long as you're so aware, goddamn right? bad. Yeah, you work on it. It's such a good filler word. But anyways, like I, I'm, I'm always brutally honest with people. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the live commentary on the UFC fight thing, which I've talked about in the past, I, I've, I told you, I said, I don't think it adds a lot of value. First of all, it doesn't really make sense unless we're actually live, going to live stream it at the time that it's happening. And it's very, that content doesn't have a long, lot of longevity because it's, this is an event that's happening now and it has to happen now. So six months from now, just, no one's going to go back I, I and know, watch that's just two people me, talking. Though. That's just something I get me. that. I get that. But I also, I also told you that I didn't feel right taking your money to do this, to do that episode, because I thought it was a waste of your money to do it. Mm. And I don't think it that helps the, the audience. I like that. I don't help. I don't think it helps the show. Yeah. Really. Right. I'm not here, just here to take, to make a quick buck to, you know, I'm not that kind of person that's just going to take someone's Because well, you're in this now. You're yeah. part of the brand now. I'll just, and I'll just tell people flat out. Because I, I, like, I feel like I want to coach people too. You know, if if they're looking to build something, it's more than just showing up and turning some cameras on. We're doing more than... I'm helping you do more than that. Mm. I want this to be a success. I want this to be an interesting show. I want you to have a good time, but I also want you to develop your skills as an interviewer. And I also want us to continue to get better and more interesting guests. And I want ultimately also for the audience, I want something to, that's going to be relatively engaging and interesting and fun or whatever it is, yeah. but there's got to be something in it for them. I'm Otherwise so, so goddamn it can't just myself, be totally man. selfish. This isn't just a thing that you're making just for you. Well, you also have to, but, but you also it's have to okay think about, for it to be that you have I to mean, also think about, well, why are people listening? Yeah. Right. Well, to be honest, this is very therapeutic for me. The me just me just sitting here and talking to you, or whoever, for hour, hour and a half. I yeah. I do feel happier after, and feel like there's like a weight off my shoulders from whatever I was. Well, I'm glad. Through, so. I'm glad you're getting something out of it. I I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I do. because i'm not because <laughs> uh, every time you're here i'm just like motherfucker here I, we go i cannot wait to get off <laughs> i cannot wait to get off the man that would be so no, I'm just kidding that would be so i, I enjoy if i this. found that out if you secretly just hated every moment of this and just despised me as a person uh, no, would I, I, I wouldn't kill me. i wouldn't do this if if i did i yeah. wouldn't do it but i was talking to my therapist about this actually and I brought this podcast up and oh yeah, me, this, was this recently? Uh, yeah, a few weeks ago. Okay, um, yeah. How did one that of the go? Things and I've told you about this is I'm very hard on myself. I feel like I'm not where I need to be as a host, or even after an episode that I you know do a pretty decent job in hosting. I feel like I could have done more. I could have said things differently, said the word fucking like way less times. And I was telling I was telling that to my therapist and how I can just be more goddamn present in the moment and just let go of what I'm saying and just let go of all that. Because one of the things I do is I watch different podcasts and I get inspiration from Sure, that's those. good. But what I do that's an issue is I compare myself to those hosts. Like there's no way I could compare myself to Chris D'Elia or or Tom Segura, or well, yeah, Bill because Simmons. they've been doing because it they're a just, long time. They're them, and I'm me. Yeah, I'm not gonna be Chris D'Elia. I'm not gonna be Bill Simmons. That's I'm true. not gonna be Joe Rogan. That's I'm true. not gonna be Brendan Schaub. I'm not gonna be those guys. They're them, and I'm me. Right. So, I think it's just like this weird push and pull where I wanna, I I find I get things from them that I implement into my own vocabulary and my own style. But it's as if I'm sort of trying to be a chameleon and be like them rather than be myself and enhance who I am by gaining inspiration from them and little anecdotes from their speech, from their hosting style, right? Oh my God, that do, was good. Do you uh, do you feel comfortable? Because now you got me curious, but do you feel comfortable talking about it? Because I'm curious what, yes, like, what that conversation, what you got out of that with the therapist, what well, did they say? 
I'm curious what they would say about that. The thing that we got into, we got into a bit of a existential conversation where things like that, like things that we're attached to that we value. So power, money, friends, status. I would lump all the things that you just said under the term success. Success. Like how do we define success? And it's all those right, okay, let me to a okay. lot of people. So let's do an activity here, okay? Think of, I'm going to do it to you right now. Okay. okay? Think of, okay, th imagine a whiteboard right here, okay? Imagine a whiteboard. And I'm going to write the word, I'm going to write your name, Alex. Okay? Now, what is Alex? Okay? Okay, you tell me. Uh, you're okay to you're describe myself you're a man right yeah, you're yeah, a male yeah okay yeah. man yeah you are a son of your mom right mm -hmm. okay what's your mom's name christina okay christina's son these are your attributes this is who got alex it. is okay got it you're a producer yeah okay you have a job friends yeah okay what would you say your personality is like what's what's like a characteristic of alex like if someone was to say who is alex what is he what's his what's his behavior his I'd attitude say uh just to use a few words thoughtful, okay, thoughtful. um methodical, methodical definitely funny funny okay uh, i can't i certainly can be i mean i could be ser very serious a lot of people see me as a very serious person but also see me at, at times that i can be if i choose to be that i can be I can be kind of a goofball. Okay, too, yeah. So um, I would also put sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so how do I know? He's just setting me. He's Hot, just setting me cutie. up. Cutie. Um, setting me up. Okay, so we have a bunch of things, right? Yeah. yeah. These all represent Alex, right? Let's say your mom comes up to you one day after all these years of nurturing and taking care of you and giving you your identity. Let's say Christina... The lady that she is comes up to you and yeah. says, hey, Alex, I need to tell you something. What? You're actually not my son. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. Start, when I've you were three months old, that. your biological parents passed away and they left you at our doorstep in a little casket and we raised you. Okay. Your whole identity your whole world of what you were and how you were raised and what your parents are yeah. is completely in shambles at this point okay are you still alex yes okay now alex okay let's say you lose your arm okay okay are you still alex I'm still Alex, but uh, as a guitar player, as not, having not having the ability to play guitar and then losing an arm, that would be pretty depressing. Oh, we're getting on to something here. I like it. I like how you said that. So guitar is very big for you. Musician, yeah. music. Let's say a doctor came up to you and really did tell you that they need to amputate both your arms because of some flesh eating disorder that will kill you within seconds if it gets to your brain and it goes just through your arms yeah they cut your arms off completely your sense of alex is a little bit shattered because of that a little a but you're lot. still alex you're still alex you're still who you are okay let's say all your friends because we had that on the board, right? Who's Alex, right? He has friends. Yeah. He's someone that's thoughtful. People think he's methodical. What was the other one? Charismatic? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sexy, cute, whatever. <laughs> Let's say all of them call you at once saying, hey, Alex, we're done with you. We're completely done with you. We just don't want to be your friend anymore. We don't want anything to do with that you. That would be devastating. A bit of Alex is taken away, but Alex is still there. And now, now imagine every time we do this, I'm erasing all of these. I'm erasing all the words. Okay. But your name is your Alex is still there. Got it. You 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 get you're getting what I'm getting to, yeah. right? A bit of existentialism is 
all these things happen to you, you losing everything, but the fact that you're still here, you're still thinking, you still have consciousness, you are still Alex. You are still who you are. Right. Like the one that okay. really hit me, the one that really got the gears turning in my head were the was the one where my mom coming to me one day and telling me that I'm not actually her son and I have no DNA or biological similarities with her. Right. That would shake my whole world upside down. Who the fuck am I? Who am I? You know, it was funny that you say that. I've always felt kind of like an alien in the family. Okay, but you're probably not. Not re- No, I know. I know that because I can see I can see sort of similarities in some aspects of my personality. But I've always something of I've just always felt like I've I must be adopted somehow. Like I must be because my parents are too. You know, it's I've always felt that way. So that wouldn't actually surprise me if someone did. But it would uh, it would definitely give me something to think about. Right. For sure. So, but my point, like with this whole exercise that we just did is that you could literally be told that you're not, you're 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 saying you're always you, no matter You're always you, like you just being, if someone, this, this wouldn't make sense because I don't, this isn't, this is not how it works. This isn't how science works and how the human body works. But like, let's say a, a doctor came up to you and said, hey, Alex, you're a male, right? But actually what we found in your blood samples and your DNA is that you have a lot of female uh, DNA, female atoms that actually make you 90% female and 10% male. I know that's obviously not a fucking thing and I'm just speaking out of my ass there. But that would shake up your identity. Like, what the hell? Who am I? But you're still you. You're still Alex. You're still thinking. Therefore, I am. Therefore, me being conscious and be, me being alive in whatever body I am or whoever my parents are, I'm still me. So Yeah, you're saying, you're. I, I get it. You're more than the sum of your life experiences and your family and all that. Although that, a lot of that helps form your personality. But it too. doesn't. You don't think so? They tell you it works like that, but it doesn't. Interesting. Well, that's the debate. That's I how guess. they. That's what they try to get you on. But that's. I don't not think how we've. I don't think we've figured that out yet. They tell you how that works, but it's not how it works. We got to be able to. So the whole point with the exercise was we got to be able to detach from whatever the freak happens. Okay, me doing this podcast. A part of Mo, I told him, is a podcaster, and me being an absolute specimen of a human being in every way um, is something that I am. And he said, well, okay, you need to be so detached from the outcome of what the podcast is and who, whatever. This is going back to your, your you comparing yourself comparing. to all these other celebrities. I just got to let go and understand that everything all we do here is meaningless at the end of the day that's the whole point right your friends i'm not saying they're meaningless but they don't really make sense in determining who alex is right like you're you like look at your body look at your hands Mm -hmm. you're you if your mom came up to you right now and said alex you're not my kid sorry man sorry i don't know what to tell you you're a bastard You'd be like, holy fuck, everything I've ever known about my life and my mom and my parents and my culture is completely, uh, you're not even Greek, you're Bosnian. Yeah. You'd be like, holy fuck, what the hell am I? Who am I? Yeah. Is my name even Alex? Right? But that doesn't matter because you know what? You're just being, right? And it's a very existentialist, existentialism this perspective and it, ha- it takes a lot of practice to get to that point yeah but that's something i'm learning i'm s- that's good that's good I, and i kind of i pretty much butchered the whole lecture i just gave you it was way more i got i got the point though then i got the point i just explained it to you but that's just that's the gist of it for sure so i don't know i'm kind of at the point where eh, i'm here i'm just here 
that is what it is. What's going on is what's going on. If people see it and they hate on it, fuck you. I don't care. And that's it. That's all. That's all. Life goes on, right? We're just here. I'm he- I'm me. You could you listen, man. You could text me tomorrow and say, "Hey Mo, I'm done with you. You were not a good client. You were not a good host for my show, and I'm done producing your show." And I'd be like, "Oh, damn. I don't know what to do anymore." But hey, it's all meaningless. Nothing even matters at the end of the day. It's a it, it's a little bit uh pessimistic, but I don't see it like that. I just see it as something that's just free flowing just goes just happens this is that life goes on once you're dead nothing ever even mattered well that's a little dark but uh i think i think it's good if you if you are able to find ways to like your therapist said to just let go and because again it's it's easy to all the stuff that you do in your life like this like this podcast for example you know, whatever your creative and endeavors are, you get all this stuff gets wrapped up in becomes your personality, mm-hmm. your identity, right? And you know, we've talked about this on on previous episodes, but just look at how many people get like their 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 jobs are part of their identity, and when that that job goes away because they've put so much of their life into it and they spend so much time there, they you know maybe they put in overtime, they do a lot of things, maybe they feel underappreciated, and their whole identity is wrapped up in their career. And when that career just goes away, they mm. they feel like a but, shell of their yeah. former selves. Like they don't know what to do with mm. themselves. But so whatever I, I you can do to, to to work on that, I think that's that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. I just want to correct you with the word letting go though. It's not necessarily letting go. It's just understanding that none of it matters it's tough to wrap your head around it well if none of it really matters why do any of any of it that's the whole meaning of you obviously take enjoyment that's the whole so it obviously does matter so but the next step to that progression is okay nothing matters so why are we living we are living because we have a fire in our in our inside us a purpose that we live on throughout our life and that's what keeps us alive whatever that purpose might be but we know at the bottom of it at the core of the whole thing it doesn't really matter because purpose is just something that keeps us alive until i understand what you're saying right like it's not really letting go man you know what i'm saying like of course, of course, if you're well, not. Well, we have to have a purpose in life to do something. To, otherwise, right. why will you get out of bed in the morning? Why don't you just kill yourself? Like there has to be a purpose right, but, to living. You have to find something to, to get enjoyment to, to, you know, personal development. There have to be things to look forward to. But I understand what you're saying. Like if you're asking the existential question, does any of this really truly matter? You could make that argument. Right. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you if my mom came to me and said, Mo, you're not my son, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, well, let me just let me just think about this for a second and really unpack it in my head about existentialism and really think about it as nothing matters. No, I'd be fucking devastated. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I'd be in complete and utter shambles. I get it. But it's just you got to get to the point where understanding that you're you and you're you, you're alone in this. You're alone in, like, you came into this world by yourself, right? You're not leaving with someone else either. Right. You're dying in your own mind. You're dying in your own personal and individual self. No one's grabbing your hand and, you know, getting you to the pearly gates with you. You're doing it on your own, right? Yeah. It's like, it's a bit of, it's empowering, man. I mean, shit, we're all... I'm in this on my own. As much as I depend on you for producing this show and ultimately giving me happiness through the content we make, yeah. I'm I'm just I got to you know, I got to understand that I've I'm me and I'm I've got myself. I don't know. I yeah. it's it's a weird thing. I'm I'm just trying to learn it still, but well, let me know how like let me let me know how you progress. I want to hear more about it. 
you know what? I'm sure everybody could benefit from seeing a therapist. I'm sure. I'm sure I could benefit. For sure, I'd probably I get a lot out of it. I don't know why people don't do it. I think it's, it's probably well. The only I've never looked into it, but the only thing that concerns me is is the expense because I don't I don't know. If, I'd have to check and see. I feel like your my work benefits would, would cover, probably cover some of that. Yeah. So I'd have to look into that. But yeah, we could talk forever about that. But uh, we should probably end right there. Hey, buddy. None of it even matters. None of it matters. <laughs> I think I think that's enough for this week. Episode seventy-seven. Episode seventy-seven. Enjoy your twenty-four. Stay nice, kids. <laughs> <laughs>